Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Scenes, where we peel back the curtain to see how Vidyard customers are using video to accelerate their business. Today, I'm speaking with someone uh, who's kind of a big deal around here. <laughs> Chris from Babel Quest is known for making creative videos, both for his prospects and on the daily, he makes amazing LinkedIn videos that get passed around all the Vidyard Slack channels. So I'm really excited to get into Chris's head today and find out how he does it. Chris, welcome. Hello, Thank you. what an introduction, quite a big deal. <laughs> well, like Anchorman. It, I can't lie, it's true. You're kind of a big deal around here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we it's all know your face, you. so it's great to finally talk to you in person. That's very, very kind of you. Yeah, thanks. It's great to great to be here. Cool. Well, thank you. Yeah. And where are you joining us from today? Uh, so I'm in Oxfordshire in the UK, sort of middle of the country, um, where yep. it's currently drizzly and uh, and cold because it's the summer. So and the English summer, yeah. <laughs> What it Although is. you guys did have a heat wave a while ago, I think. Yeah, for a week. We had a week. Okay. That was our summer. Yeah, it was too hot. Everyone hated it. And now it's back to rain. So perfect for us. Gotta really. have something to complain about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thanks again. And yeah, I guess I'll just jump in uh, and start to ask you, uh, what's your number one tip for feeling comfortable on camera? thought I'd open with that one just to get us loosened up <laughs> sure yeah it's a good question I think that's the thing I see a lot but it is that the thing that's kind of stops people is themselves um I'm not sure I'm either the best most qualified person. I've always felt quite comfortable sort of being a bit silly on on camera um but I think it, it's important to make sure that you know what you're going to say so it's not so much about getting psyched you know you can be psyched up to do a video um, but it's really, really important that you know what your message is going to be. Ultimately, you need to deliver a really short, succinct video that adds value to a prospect. And if you don't have a beginning, a middle and an end, you can just ramble. And I've definitely been guilty of that in the past. So I want to think about the message, know what I'm going to say, even if it's just a couple of bite sized things I want to say and then deliver it. And know that if I need to take a couple of takes to do it, then that's OK. Totally. That makes sense. That's something I do usually when I'm making videos. On the first take, I'll, I'll be like, I can freestyle it. It's fine. By like the third take, I, I know exactly what I'm going to say. And obviously that's the one that works. So. Yeah, 100%. And I've definitely done that. I kind of, you know, I've, I've done loads of research about someone I really feel like I understand. And I just think I'm just going to go straight in without my, my pointers, my kind of road map, as mm -hmm. it were. And yeah, I just yeah. end up talking about all kinds of stuff. It's awful. It's like, how did so, I get here? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> Terrible. yeah. But well, thanks for that. That's good advice. Why don't you tell us a bit about Babel Quest? What do you do? What do your customers love about you? Yeah, so, yeah. So, so we're um, we're a HubSpot partner. Um, one of five and a half thousand globally so there's a lot of us out there but we're fortunate to be an elite partner agency so we're in the top global kind of top percent there's only about sort of 20 or 25 or so of us globally um, and we help businesses to to get on board uh, using hubspot so aligning sales and, and marketing um getting a crm in place um so it's super fun stuff hubspot's a you know really exciting platform doing some really really amazing things um, and we're really excited to be, you know, a part of that. We understand it inside and out. And um, I work in sales, so I'm I'm responsible for uh, the entire sales process, along with my colleague Lily. Uh, and so I do outbound prospecting to target accounts. We generate a lot of inbound leads, being a, an inbound marketing agency. Um, and then, you know, we do deliver the um, discovery, and we'll, you know, find out, do demos, and take it all the way through. And, and hopefully, we get customers the other side. Um, buying HubSpot, and then when they um, when they choose to buy, they get to work with uh, an amazing delivery team um, who do some absolutely incredible things with our clients and 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 get some amazing results. Um, and I th you asked about kind of what people like about it. we're quite flexible. So I think what's really really great about the team is they're they're very agile in being able to make sure that when things aren't necessarily going the way we expected them to, shifting up and trying different things and stuff, and and ultimately. You know, we're an elite agency, so people come to us because we know it inside and out. You know, we, we, we know the platform from top to bottom, so there's nothing really we can't help people with on HubSpot. So if you're out there looking at HubSpot uh, and you want questions, or you've got questions, or you've got HubSpot, 
give us a shout, happy to help. Talk to the experts, awesome. Cool, and so then when it comes to video, you're in sales, obviously, but how did how did that start with you at BabelQuest? Um, either personally, like, did it come from you personally? Did it start at a company level? Um, it actually started before I, I joined. I, I, I applied for the job at BabelQuest, um, couldn't get through, the business was, was really, really busy, and I spoke to Lily, who was picking up the phone, as she does in, in sales, and she sort of suggested, well, look, why don't you try and get through with a video? You know, we're big on video. They'd already adopted it, certainly from a sales perspective. Send Eric, who's my boss, a video. So I, I did, but because I've got a bit of a background in making kind of creative stuff and being a bit silly, I, I made a, a sort of typically me video, um, actually not too dissimilar to a video I think you'll share that was prospect that I did for a prospecting video a little bit later on dropping in little silly slides and stuff and got an immediate response from Eric. I found his mobile number. I'd messaged it to him, got an immediate response, called him at me in for an interview and had it. And then from that point, I became the de facto video person. And the team were already using it, but they all had their own you know, existing things they were working on. Um, and I was kind of anointed the sort of almost the vidyard kind of power user, like looking after actually the, the folder and all that kind of stuff. And I love all that tech. And I really, really enjoyed and understood and, and liked Vidyard straight off the bat. Um, and so that was it really. I kind of fell in love with Vidyard. We use it consistently as a sales tool. Uh, we use it with our clients as well. Um, and then I started making these kind of other sort of slightly wackier ones uh, and putting them out on, on LinkedIn and getting really, really interesting and fun responses and growing my network. And that kind of sort of started really the last kind of, I guess, 12, 15 months or so of me being a full on a professional network. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you've really taken it places. <laughs> it's not just for sales prospecting, but beyond. That's cool. So were, did you have any original goals? Like what were your goals going into it? Like purely prospecting or how, or has that changed at all? Do you have any problems that you're trying to solve with video? Um, we, we were very much video first. So video was part of our outbound prospecting. So we were using it one-to-one. -one. Um, there was an opportunity for us to start making some more kind of evergreen content that we could share. We use a lot of um, sales sequences and things. So we were doing that kind of outbound initial prospecting, but after that, not, not too much other stuff. So between Lily and I, we started to create a bit more evergreen stuff where we could actually describe results from case studies and talk about blog content rather than just sharing a, a long blog or a long case study. So that was super fun. Um, and really the, the feedback that we got, you know, pushed us to using it more. So the goal really was, was about, you know, creating opportunities. We, we, I joined at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so we weren't kind of sure how things were going to be impacted. Um, as it was, obviously everyone was having to work remotely. Some were finding it easier than, than others. We'd always been a, 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 a flexible working business. So we were capable of all working from home. Um, but it was interesting to kind of have conversation and talk about that and, and drive conversations around even using Vidyard as we're, you know, we're a Vidyard partner as well. So um, using it to kind of help people to understand that this is now the kind of way that we speak to each other rather than networking events. And that opened up some really cool conversations. Right. Yeah, it really is the way to get your face out there in front of people and meet people these days, for sure. So, so you and Lily are creating the videos. Are you, is that mostly where your videos are coming from? Do you have any other, like, do you have an in-house team or anyone helping you? Or is it mostly like your user generated? Yeah, pretty much. Um, so, so I'd say everybody in the team uses um, video in different ways. Um, Certainly from a, a client delivery, it's been really great. We do a lot of, understandably, a lot of HubSpot implementation and enabling of features and switching things on. And we're doing it all remotely now. So when we're doing that kind of thing, you know, our clients love the fact that we can build something. And rather than just saying it's on, we can show a, a demo and, and, and explain how it works, explain what we've done um, and collaborate in that way. And, you know, we've done all this kind of stuff. And it works really, really well. And clients really love that the whole asynchronous stuff. We don't have to set up a call to explain a thing. We can just send them a, a quick one or two minute demo of that. In terms of the evergreen stuff, um, we did it all um, ourselves. Um, and it's it's nothing too dissimilar. We sat, you know, we sat in front of a, a screen 
Um, I bought a green screen to kind of be able to show stuff up in the background. Um, but we were stuck at home, you know, all of our great, you know, we've got great lighting and cameras and all kinds of stuff. It was all stuck in the office. We couldn't go there. Right. Um, so we did it all from home. And that was really what people were expecting. Um, you know, this whole last year, videos in our homes is just the normal. So so it, it, it tied into that perfectly well. And um, yeah, we'll probably start to produce some more stuff in the office um, in the coming months. But it, it worked. You know, the information is the important piece, right? As opposed to where you're sat or where you're doing it. Absolutely. All about the content and the story you're telling. And yeah, that's great. Well, why don't we just, oh, I see a question coming in actually from the audience. What type of content have you found to be the most successful with your audience? Um, that's a really good question. I think- Thanks, Matthew, for that question. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, I think the important, it's important to make sure that the content is tied to a problem. So um, we will do direct one-to-one -one video prospecting, um, but it's not enough to go, hey, my name's Chris, I work for Babel Quest. we sell HubSpot, HubSpot's cool, do you wanna buy HubSpot? It doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't work, you know, you'll, you'll bore people. So what tends to work best is to do your research as any good sales person would do and lead with what you think the problem is. And you might not always get it wrong, but if you get it right, you can be sure you'll most times get a response. Mm -hmm. So I think it's about tying into that. Um, ultimately, it doesn't have to be personalized. If you can create something around, if I create a video saying why I know HubSpot makes a difference for a specific vertical, I might send out that video to a number of people. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it has to be relevant to them. And that might seem like a really obvious answer, but personalization is important and answering a question is important. Um, or answering a, a problem. So as long as it's direct and, and relevant to them and short, short content, keep it under a minute, um, tends to work the best for me. Right. So like even, as you said, like even if it's not personalized, like to, even if you're not saying the person's name because you're trying to do it at scale, you always try to find like a common factor or something like a point of interest. You know this is going to solve a problem for your audience and that's what makes it personal, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I, I, you know, I could do a target uh, list where I know people are using a, a, a different platform. I won't name any names. Um, and I know some of the issues that are faced within that, you know, right. perhaps they're not they're not tied together. The com conversation between sales and marketing doesn't work, mm -hmm. but, you know, that it creates lots of friction. So if I go in and, and I know that and I can say, you know, I think right now you're experiencing friction between sales and marketing because of this specific reason. Does that sound like you? If yeah. it does, here's here's how this helps. They go, yeah, that is me. That's 100% me. And if I yeah. see that they clicked on a video, then I might create a personalized one and say, hey, you clicked right. on the thing. I reckon that might have been. And of course, because Vidyard, it tells me how long they've watched. They've watched all of it. It's yeah. a good chance. They're pretty engaged. It's a, something they're looking at. And then I could go really personalized and, and speak directly to them. So it's whatever works. You can A, B totally. test. Absolutely. That's great. And this seems like the perfect segue uh, to show one of your videos, actually. I'd love to show um, a, a video that you sent out to a prospect. Um, is that all right with you if we show that now? Yeah, sure. Cool. Hi, Benny. Um, I was going to call you, but you're undoubtedly a very busy man, so I thought I would shoot you a video. I would love to have a call, um, but my interest in Flow Live is of a slightly different nature. We have been watching you not in a creepy way, but your marketing director, Anna Viner, downloaded the free HubSpot CRM a few months ago. And over the last few months, we've been sending over some useful resources um, related to that. Um, I work for a HubSpot partner dedicated to helping customers grow, and I feel pretty confident that we're a good fit to work together. Um, so here's what I know. You've got a very exciting product. You've got some new funding. You've got a new CEO, um, and you are specifically looking to increase your presence in Europe, the US, and also increase your marketing presence. You've also recently updated your website, but there's no marketing automation as far as I can tell in place um, there's no calls to action um, and also you're directly responding and manually responding to uh, those inbound leads hence why we're speaking now um, I believe that there is a better way a more functional way and I would like the opportunity to explain that to you considering that you're probably investing a lot of money in an expensive Salesforce package I think the better way is also potentially um, more cost-effective I'm fairly sure it will be so if you can give me some time to explain more in a call then I can detail to you what we can do 
um, how we can help you to generate more qualified leads and help you to achieve those growth goals. Um, I put my meeting link at the end of this video so you can book some time that works for you and hopefully we can have a chat. Um, if I am completely wrong with all of that and none of that is of any use, then I hope you enjoyed the video. Here's a picture of a cute pole cat. Uh, here they're very popular in Israel. Um, but otherwise, I hope we speak soon. Thanks so much. Take care. There it was. I mean, I like, I love this video for so many reasons. A lot of them you already kind of went into, you know, it's personal. It's, uh, you mentioned, you call out a problem that you know that your prospect has and, and you tease at a solution. Um, I won't speak for you, but did you want to take us through maybe your inspiration, your thought process behind making a video like that? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it, my journey started out with a video just like that. I made one very, very similar for, for Eric um, and he was blown away by it. And to be honest, it's the easiest thing in the world to create. And I, I say I appreciate not everybody is is, is technical, but really, like if I showed you, it, it's, you know, you are literally just, you have to know a little bit about video editing, but really I'm just dropping pictures into a timeline. It, it's quite straightforward, um, but it's fun. Obviously it keeps things upbeat and, and I've, made a f I've made a few of them. I don't do that for every single contact, but if it's worthwhile you're reaching out you think you've got a really great opportunity and you you only have that first opportunity to make a a, a first impression um then it's worth the extra time it, it probably took me 30 40 minutes to to make obviously there's some research in there as well um but you do that anyway so in terms of additional time um so you, you know it, it, it it's fun and it, i enjoy it and it's you know it, it reflects me and that's really what we're trying to do especially as we're all remote i you know i like to think i'm a you know, I work in sales because I want to help people. I don't work in sales because I want to, you know, drive Teslas and 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 sort of spray the cash around. You know, I, I like meeting people. HubSpot resolves um, some amazing business problems, um, and I like to be able to share that. and And it, and it worked. It was it was a fun one uh, to put out, and I've had some great responses from it. In fact, that that one, I, and this is no lie, I literally got an email back about an hour later. Amazing. So amazing. Yeah. Well, I can see why. Like. As I said, it's it's just like it's to the point. It's personal, um, but you keep it lighthearted, obviously, with the videos and everything like that. So, yeah, I think I can see why that would be really effective. Um, yeah, I had I had fun on that. I've made a few of them, and I I sort of just for some reason I decided that I would always include a picture of an animal that was relevant to the person. So I, there was always a bit of fun in that when I was spending the odd minute or two googling what animals are prevalent in Israel, for example. In that case, turns out it's a polecat. Um, so, you know, I'm learning as well at the same time. Yeah, that's awesome. You don't just look at their LinkedIn pictures and say, hmm, what animal does this person look like? <laughs> that would be that's great if I had that move. ability. If anyone out there can do that, that would be great. <laughs> it's someone's special talent, I'm sure. <laughs> that's great. Um, so you were saying, and something I'm interested in is, you don't do that for everyone, obviously, but how do you make that call? Like, how do you decide when, you know, it's important enough to send um, a prospect a video like that? Yeah, it's a good question. It obviously depends on how much time you have. Every every salesperson out there will have different targets and, and they'll have a, a hit rate that they'll that they'll have. We're pretty targeted. Um, we're fortunate that we generate a good amount of inbound leads. We're um, we're in a we're in a good position. People know who you know who we are as a HubSpot agency, so we generate stuff like that. Um, for me, the trigger is if I if I I mean this this example was really really compelling because I I knew that they were a really really good fit. You know, HubSpot's a scaling platform. They had you know just had all this budget they've got a new ceo in place the chap i was emailing was 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 manually emailing me inquiries and they were you know startup of sorts but i'm like this isn't how it should work like there are better ways of being able to do this and i know that the problem i have so i will be really annoyed as a salesperson if if i can't explain that to them properly and so i wanted to make sure i made a bit of extra effort to make sure that that video got watched and mm -hmm. I explained the point. I think there are other ones when you're outreach where you go, this is probably a good fit, but I don't, I'm not 100% sure on if I've got the problem right. You might not want to spend as, as much time in it. So I think everybody in sales, and I'd be curious for people, for people out there's thoughts, but I think you'll, certainly from my experience in sales, I've, I've always kind of in my mind, I, I kind of like, this is a really, really good one. And I know that there's a really, really good fit for, for HubSpot or whatever it is you're selling. And other ones where you're like, oh, they're, they're in my ICP, but, 
maybe it's not there you know so you might not choose to do it but um you can you know you could bang them out pretty quick so if you're doing an abm um campaign and you want to make make a bit of extra effort with all of that it's it, you got to try it right see if the the juice is worth the squeeze yeah for sure do you um do you often i guess I, I, my question is more about like the buyer's journey and like typically do you send videos like at the beginning or which stage where do you see the success or does it vary yeah um it's it's tough so i've been trialing something recently where i actually send video second only because i noticed that so i used to send video first i'm trying both um i think video is important throughout the entire process and like i said in that in that example that was my first opportunity to put it in first i've had a few times where i've sent a video to a a big like blue chip enterprise business and not had anything and i i'm suspectful and in fact i was speaking to somebody about it that sometimes when you kind of get links some of those corporate emails don't like it it bounces out so i'm trying a little bit of kind of mixing things up but really video although i've been banging on about it and i know video has been doing it for far longer than i have about about the power of video in sales it's been around for ages and i've been telling everybody you need to get on board with this it's still the difference in in a you know in a um anybody from c suite they're getting sales emails all the time but they'll probably flick through them if they've got a video there's a better chance in fact i i read a stat from vidyard about you know if you've got video in the title there's a five times greater chance that that email's going to get open so yeah. i mean that for me that's like well that's what more do you from a sales perspective do you want yeah. to have a five you know a 500% chance that your email's going to get open Yes, yeah. please. So, yeah. so I think it's throughout beginning. Great first impression. If you can make a first impression, show who you are. It's just like you're at a networking event, right? You're just standing around waiting. Someone walks by, like, "Hey, have a conversation." Great. Um, and then all the way through. So you can use video for explaining, uh, doing demos. I do it for short asynchronous right. demos. I use it for explaining proposals, um, and that's great because you can see how far they've got into the video, all that kind of stuff. And again, we use it in client delivery at the, at the other, you know, at the other end. So it's important all the way through and especially now you know we're back to back zoom meetings that probably didn't all need to happen definitely don't all need to happen definitely don't all need to be an hour long probably don't need to be half an hour you know so 5 minutes here's an explainer 2 minutes here's an explainer cut out a lot of the um the business there and, and it, it makes such a difference yeah they can watch it later they can share it with someone they always have it so yeah that's great yeah demos are super yeah <laughs> video is an ideal way to give someone a demo for sure. Um, and re yeah, re about that video stat too, we had a recent, uh, we did, I don't know if you saw our neuroscience study recently, but, but yeah. basically that was crazy because people's uh, moods are down when they go into their inbox and then when they see a video, it automatically just like lifts it out of that like negative point of or state of yeah. mind so that I thought that was really interesting but it, it goes with that whole theme of just like why not switch it up get get people's Absolutely. attention yeah yeah 100% oh there was a question from Jordan do you always send it out for the first video so I think he's talking about the order which you may have just answered um which is yeah. that you yeah I would say yes um I would definitely try it um it's yeah i would i would say as uh, there is like say I'm, I'm kind of a b testing something very specific to a specific type of organization but really as a as a first touch for the most part yeah we would use it as mm -hmm. a, we would use it as a first touch i might add some context in text i, I have in the past in email sequences literally just sent hey whoever my video you know and that's it um but so i might add a little bit of context some some text or something just to explain oh, yeah that's a, bit a more. that's another good question your subject lines <laughs> Do you have a formula or do you just like try to include video or? Uh, yes. Oh, the subject line. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah and I've I've, just, <laughs> no, I've watched so many different things about, you know, the psychology of the subject line, how many words it needs to be. But, you know, the things that ring true for me are it needs to say video in it because people see that and they want to do it. In fact, I normally put it in all caps. So they definitely see video. Um, and then I try and make the subject line just engaging, you know, asking them a question. So there's loads of content out there about, you know, compelling subject lines for salespeople. So you don't need me mm -hmm. to tell them that. Give it a try. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, 
So uh, do you, in terms of analytics and data, like do you, how much attention do you pay to that? What metrics matter to you? Yeah, so in sales, for me, it's about the opens and clicks. Um, we, um, we obviously, uh, depending on how much you or others know about HubSpot, HubSpot will provide a lot of that information as well. Um, but Vidyard provide the, the opens and, and the clicks. So that's really, really important. You know, if you know someone's just watched your video, that's the opportunity to pick up the phone and say, hey, did you just watch the video? What did you think? All that kind of stuff. Um, but another really, really useful stat that HubSpot can't provide that Vidyard provides is the, is the length of time watched. Um, and that for me is is great. And it's great for two reasons. One is I know that, you know, if they've watched the whole video, I've got a good understanding of them being engaged. And if they've watched 5%, I'm like, well, I've probably caught them at the wrong time or it's not good. Um, but what it was also really useful for was to enable me to A-B test my videos. Mm-hmm. And I actually found that I was um, I was getting a lot of opens and it were, people were only getting about kind of 33% of the way through the video. And I'd, I'd watch back. And it turned out really that I was spending the first bit going like, hey, it's Chris from Babel Quest. Hope you're doing well. I sent you an email a couple of days ago and you may not have got it, blah, 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 blah. They're like, cool. Like, why, who, why are you summarizing this for me? So I've switched it up now. And now I just lead in with what I think the problem is, like straight off the bat. And I thought it's been in my mind a lot about social and things. And you've got that kind of three seconds. You know, people are just used to scrolling, right? The yeah. scroll. So now attention spans are like seconds. You know, I don't have 15 seconds for someone to watch a video while I explain what my name is, who I work for, what I did previously to, to, you know, I just need to say, hey, I'm trying to get your time because of this. And then they go, and then I can do a bit more, you know, once I've got their attention, that's really helped. So it's been useful from an A-B testing to do to do that as well. So that's, that's a really great stat. That's good, good advice for sure. Um, do you have, if I know we're almost wrapped up here now, but do you have any advice for people who are looking to get started, get inspired when it comes to making video? Yeah, and I mean, I hope that people watching are kind of keen on, and I, I know that, you know, people that have sort of fo- followed me or liked me in my posts, I do kind of silly creative stuff. And if people are interested in doing all that sort of stuff, then, you know, there's plenty of content out there. People have always got, if you're a creative person, you'll have silly ideas, just give it a go put it you know put it out there I've just recently got into TikTok um I'm probably too old for it but it's a great platform to be able to just kind of create silly content and of course you can then share the content over on on LinkedIn LinkedIn police will probably tell you off but it's fun okay. and it gets it gets great engagement and it's really really good fun the thing that I would say though to people who are unsure about perhaps where to start is if you are LinkedIn is constantly people sharing blog articles or latest updates from the business. And that's fine. But personally, as a LinkedIn user, um, I want someone to tell me why they're excited about that blog. And video, I think, is a really great way of doing that. So you might be really excited about a recent paper that you've just put out or a blog article that's just come out. But to be honest, I'm probably not going to read it. And LinkedIn might not want you to go onto that page because it's going to take you off. So you create a video and you upload it to your own post and it stays within the platform. It's you saying, hey, we've just released this thing. This is why it's cool. Here's some amazing stats. I'm talking you through it. This is why I'm excited about it. And you put the link in the comments. It's gonna give you better visibility on LinkedIn. People are gonna understand you and your passions a bit more. And they're probably asking more questions in the comments. So I would start there. Don't just share the text content. Why are you sharing it? And then tell people why you're sharing it and use that as a, as a basis for your content. Yeah, absolutely. It's social media for a reason, right? Like people want to see you and see your take and, and, and not necessarily just another repost. So they think that's, that's great advice. And of course, video is a great way to do that. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, for anyone who would like to see more of Chris's videos, should we direct them to your LinkedIn, Chris? Is that or, t- or is it more TikTok that you're looking for followers these days? <laughs> I'll, say, I'll definitely, I've got like 21 followers on TikTok. So I'll definitely take some TikTok followers. Um, but really, yeah, I mean, if people have got questions, they want to get started with it, give me a shout, um, drop me a, a, a connection request. Love to find out what people are working on, if I can help them with stuff. Um, so yeah, find me on LinkedIn. Um, hilariously, find me on TikTok uh, and, yeah, and reach out and I'd, I'd love to see how I can help for sure. And of course, if you're interested in HubSpot, you want to find out more about that, then 100% on your guy. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Chris. That's our show for today. And uh, I'll be seeing you online.